We are dedicating our set tonight to the flood victims up around US Highway US 321. Uh, the rope's out, and we are taking money, not for ourselves. We'll document it with receipts and everything. If you want to fill our pockets with money, we will go on to buy electric generators and gas heaters because there are absolutely people going to be with electricity this winter. <laughs> If you want to see some, uh, you know, if you're in the dark tours, you can check my Instagram page. Um, let's just get this one Anyway, this song's called uh, Life's Not Fair, But I Love You. Ready? for some reason. Uh, that's the only thing, that's the only merch I've got left. Uh, any amount of money above a dime <laughs> uh, will take you a CD of either Over Mountain Sound or the Bitter as Hell albums. Uh, they're also available for free online. But I'm also giving that money to uh, the US 321 people. And if they come up with a million dollars tomorrow, which will be more like a billion to fix it, then I guess I'll give my donations to trade Butler in Mountain City. That's right. Huh? He's back here trying to break toes. We're going to do. Let's do Boomerang. How's that? Is that good? No? Okay. I'm in tune, so it's okay. But while he's doing. 
doing that, my name is Tim Dave. You can find me at theartistknownastim.com. My socials are all linked there, but the only one that's different is the Instagram. That is artist underscore Tim Dave. You good? All right, cool. He's good. This song's called Boomerang. This song takes place up Stony Creek. With a rest of the day, rain or snow, ready or not, he stopped the dog, he's a run day. Ooh, 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 little boomerang. Walk the trails, he can walk the streets, walk alongside the stony creek, he's a run day. Then I couldn't see me on that 
station about the bass amp at a music store worked out when a howling around lights were turned on just right. Two amps do weird things. Sorry, no more distractions. The song is, which one? Starting over or Tennessee Whiskey? Tennessee Whiskey. Tennessee Whiskey. All right, yes. We do a version of it. Ten million people have done it and I said, well, I'm going to do it too. So here's the George Jones version in 3-4 timing with Blue Shuffle. Oh 
Though I used to look for love in all the wrong places, I'm a bottom of a bottom of a wings dry. When you poured out your love, I showed you a wings there. Yeah, the story. You're ready to go Instead of Jesus You're like trick I won't do tonight, but it's usually, it's I dip down real fast, like I'm going to uppercut somebody, and then I headbutt the mic real hard. It's more in the vein of like carrot top humor, I guess, or Gallagher, Steve-O. Still off? Carrot top still off? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, carrot yeah. top's scary, man. He'd break you in half. All right, what are we doing here? Let's do uh, Marshall Tucker or Tom Petty. Marshall Tucker. Let's do Marshall Tucker. For the sake of it. Yeah. Here's my magic eight ball. What we do up here. Oh, 
can't you see? to sing, who can't you sing, why, why can't you sing, well baby, well love, who can't you sing, why, why can't you sing, well baby, Tell us when to stop. That's what I'll tell you. Halfway through, my set becomes like jingles, like old Nokia ringtones. Mm -hmm. You'll know real quick. That's my favorite. Let's do. Um, yeah. Man. Okay. <laughs> it's called Man in the Bar. It's on the blue CD if you're interested. Rise and those kingdoms fall. Jimmy's banging on a six string in the pool. I worry, good heart's eyes with concerns and lies. I almost lose this feel of second hand smoke. Classroom with a smile and ruin your whole 738 in class. Stomp and Andrew. Which one? We have two. We got two, yeah. Whichever one you want. Ooh. Won't back down. Won't back down? Okay, that's not Kayfood. <laughs>
It's uh, probably a learning disorder. What do you? Right. <laughs> I don't know. Social anxiety. I think this song's about bad relationships, though. So you have to ask the, the man with the pay stats. It's all about squares. Huh? It's all about squares. No. Or triangles, or even triangles. Oh 
Give me two seconds. One more? Okay. okay. <laughs> I was like, you forgot it, so I was like, I forgot what time it was. Free follow. Free follow? You want to yeah. do free follow? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Thank y'all for having me. Uh, I am here for uh, specifically the hurricane relief uh, on Highway 
321 going into Pokey Elkville, Butler, Mount City. If you uh, have a shekel or two for a CD or even just have a penny, I don't care. That's what I'm taking the money for tonight. Appreciate y'all. filled with love and realness and that's what Preem Token is all about and what we're trying to build here with this D5 community. My bad, I'll leave that so what I was saying everybody is you could hear or the artist known as Tim and every stroke was built with love you know and you're about to hear Gabe Shillman and bring it and bring in the realness. Preem Token is built on realness and we started with nothing everybody a $10,000 market cap we surpassed over 1.75 million dollars in one year and three months and that's the power of community and love and everybody working together and tonight we're in a very intimate setting you know we're here with our closest friends and it's very important to me that the sounds right that the music's right but everybody as we put this out to the world you're going to feel it in your spirit we want to ask you to come and join preem token come and join something that's real stop chasing after all the fake stuff out there and just find a home here with um, people that care about you okay you're about to hear from king gabe shillman and he's changing the way music is done with King Token. And he's going to tell you a story, everybody. And I'm just so glad for everybody that's in this building tonight and everybody that's going to see this. We love you. Thank you very much. Everyone, hello. I'm here with Dan from Shiva Subs and Scrubs. He made the journey all the way up here to be a part of the first ever Rock the Mic in real life. And I just wanted to show everybody what he has going on with Tell everybody, you know, all the different products you have here. Okay. We start off as a community-based soap company, and every bit that we give, give, gets back to community. So it's always about giving back to community. So 10% goes to cancer awareness or uh, the reforestation of giant sequoias, uh, oceanic conservation, and Child, child hunger, UNICEF, and uh, world orphans. Now you make all these yourself. Right? These are all handcrafted, and we have new lines coming out. And yeah, we're just uh, excited to be a good part of the community. Well, I'll tell you, Sheba Soaps and Scrubs has always been there anytime the print has asked them, but they're always a big part, they're a huge part of the whole cryptocurrency community. And it's not its not easy to be there, it's not easy to show up every time the Dan shows up, and I'm telling you, as the cryptocurrency grows, Sheba Soaps and Scrubs will be right there growing with us. That, 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 that we are. Thank so, you so much to for Toronto. being here. Yeah. Be Toronto. Uh, all the way down to uh, Sheba Fest, up here to rock the mic for free, always showing up, and, and it don't get any better than that. And both got one leg, we're hopping on the good foot, baby. <laughs> so, that's right. Yep, that's thank right. you very much. So, um, here I am at the Patriots Coin booth, and I want to tell you a little bit about Patriots Coin, okay? They make premium gold and silver products for the cryptocurrency community. Say you own your own cryptocurrency uh, and you want gold and silver with your logos and things of that matter, Patriots Coin is the, the answer there. So please reach out to them. They've launched their token on July the 4th. Over 20 Ethereum in that token already. So nothing but growth there. But look for Patriots Coin. We're very, very proud to be your partner, part of the alliance. Thank you. Another proud partner of, of Preem Token is King Token, and I'm telling you, he put on a great show tonight for Rock the Mic in real life, and look, this is all his merch. Look, he, not only is he a wonderful musician, his artwork is world-renowned. Today, down here in downtown Jonesboro, he painted um, an Andrew Jackson that I'm telling you is going to go go far but look these are some of his prints here if you ever want to get any of gabe's merch we're going to put the uh, ufc i mean the the link up in the video so please come and get any of his merch of course proud supporter of donald trump but tons of great great artwork that only gabe can do here so um we're very proud to have him here in king token tonight and also king token if you don't know about it it's for the artist and if you're an artist out there and you're wondering how you can make some money how you can be something and grow without other people owning you you can start your own token and we can do that for you that's what cream token does we do it for businesses we do it for artists whatever it takes for success there's no greed here at Preem. so thank you very much
Shulman, and uh, I'm a singer-songwriter. I'm going to play a few songs and tell a few stories that go along with them. I'm very grateful to Prem. I'm very grateful to Jonathan for all that he's done and, um, and uh, all the support that he's given me in my career. I really appreciate you, brother. You're uh, an inspiration. Um, 
in a world where there's uh, you know a lot of people that just don't keep their word, Jonathan always keeps his word, and I appreciate that very much. So I get to travel all over the place, and I get to meet all these people. Um, up in uh, the Midwest, where I come from, there's a little town uh, called Monticello, Wisconsin. And when I say it's a little town, it's like 400 people, maybe. But they have seven bars, you know, like seven bars on one road. Wisconsin's like the biggest drinking state I've ever seen in my life. And did you know there's not a, a, like a legal drinking age there? Like you can walk in with your kid and sit down at the bar and just have a beer, like 14, whatever. It's wild. Um, but anyway, there's this little town. It's Monticello, Wisconsin. I go there and play. The first time I played there, I was like rolled into town. I was like, wow, this is, this is a tiny little town. And there's this little bar. It's called the Rathskeller, and it's like down in the basement. And I've gotten to good, know the owners really well. It's Hans and Julia. And their dad ran that bar for years. And he, he was a legend of this town in that area. He made that bar just legendary. And um, it's, it's become my favorite place to play. And when I play there, I'm pinned up against a pool table and a stone wall. And the, and the ceiling's really low. It feels like you're right above you, you know? And um, you wouldn't think it would be a great place to play, but it's always amazing. And uh, their mom, is, her name is Rose, and um, her, she, she lost her husband, and uh, they were madly in love with each other, madly in love. So one day Rose, uh, uh, her husband died unexpectedly, so she, she wrote a poem, and she gave it to me and said, would you put music to this? I said, yeah, man, I'd love to. And she said, the only stipulation is it has to be a rock and roll song. I want it to be rock and roll. He loved rock and roll. So I brought the lyrics home and I read them and I was like, man, this is an amazing song. So exactly as Rose wrote it, I, I put it in the song verbatim. And um, it's a tribute to her late husband. So I call this Rose Marty's song, but um, what she titled it Gone in 60 Seconds. And I'm going to play it for you now. Reflections 
spend eternity to get back the last 60 seconds. You were born in 60 seconds, not enough time to say goodbye. Tears and fears of wishing you were here and all the questions why. It only took 60 seconds to take you away from me. Love lasts forever, baby, and that's you and me. Yeah, you and me. Oh. Yeah, you and me. Yeah, you and me. Rose Marty's song. If you're ever up in uh, Monticello, Wisconsin, <laughs> there's nothing to do there except drink. But uh, if you're ever up there, you know you can tell Rose Marty you heard her songs. I think it's one of my favorite things in the world to do. I always have people come up on stage and sing with me or something like that. Um, but I love writing songs about the places that I go to, the people that I meet. So um, Holly here, my girlfriend, she's an amazing woman. She's from South Wayne, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. <laughs> she's got the most amazing family. And, and like uh, something that um, I didn't grow up with, but you know, when I when I got with her, I got to see it. It's like this massive family. She knows her like second, third, fourth cousins, and she'll see them out in public and be like, oh. Betty or whatever, you know, like I, I, I couldn't recognize my first cousin, so um, it's, it's an amazing thing to me. Her grandma throws a, a meal every Tuesday, she just cooks a big meal, and at lunchtime, her family will leave work and come have this meal with, with the grandma. She's like turning 90 or something here. Uh, how old is she? Like 90 something? 89, yeah. And um, it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen, especially not, not having access to that growing up, so. Anyway, um, I had a friend tell me not too long ago, Gabe, you haven't written a good song in a long time. And I was like, well, that's not very nice. Um, and he said, oh, no, you write, you, write, you write your best songs when you're sad, man. And um, I didn't even realize it. Like, I'm not sad anymore, you know what I mean? So uh, I wrote a song to try to counter that argument. You know, maybe it's a good song, I don't know. But this song is uh, fast known as the South Wayne song, so a tribute to her family. I used to be a broke man I guess I kind of still am But I've made a correction And I'm heading the direction I dream, dream, dream Pretty little blonde thing All the way from South Wayne Yeah, home of the Black Hawk High School football team Team, team Know she got a good heart She got a good family And she knows what she's doing What she's doing, what she's doing to me What she's doing to me Like it when I'm tired and alone And poor Heartbreak songs anymore. You like to watch me bleed and then bother up with my lyric sheet. So you can cry along with every song that I sing, sing, sing. You can cry along with every song that I sing, sing.
People this time of year that, that sing and play guitar, my voice is struggling, so I, I don't know if yours was or not, but it sounded amazing. I mean, you got this gravelly thing going on, it sounds great. But uh, yeah, I've been fighting fighting something, even had to cancel a couple shows. I'm not, not proud of that at all. Um, but I'm going to get through it tonight. I, uh, I love what I do. I absolutely love going around playing songs, um, especially since I started writing about places that I visit and stuff. So. There's a little town up north called Blanchardville, Wisconsin, another little dive place, and I play a bar there, and I'm very, very excited to be going back there later this month, so um, I'm gonna play that song, but uh, this life of uh, being a musician and out on the road, it, you know, it's not always the most profitable thing, so uh, that'll make sense when you hear this song. in the rut and I got me a job and then guess what? Forty hours passed and that company checked cash and that Monday alarm bell rang like revelry in hell and I was broke but I had stories to tell and I'd rather write these country songs than have good credit and have good credit I'd rather write these country songs than have good credit Again, I'd rather write these country 
country songs and have good credit. I'd rather run these highways rather than be indebted. I might be flat broke, hard broke, no joke, I don't regret it. Cause I'd rather write these country songs than have good credit. I'd rather write these country songs than have good credit. places I travel to is uh, the East East Coast, Coastal Virginia, and uh, the first time we went over there was about a year ago, I guess, and we played a string of shows, I don't, I, I don't remember where, but um, we got to eat, we got to do our first oyster shucking party, which I don't know if you've done an oyster shuck, oh my gosh. We played like three shows back to back to back, and then the last show ended at like midnight or something. And there was a bunch of people out there, and they were like, oh, you, we're, you're, we're going to an oyster shuck party. We're throwing it just for you. I was tired. All I wanted to do was go back to the hotel. And um, I, uh, the thought of oysters just grossed me out. I was like, this sounds terrible, man. And, uh, but to be nice, cordial, I was like, all right, we'll go for just a minute, you know. And as soon as I walked on the property, there was this, it was this little garage right on the Chesapeake Bay. There was a man cave. They converted this garage into a man cave. There's a, a wood stove in there, and uh, they handed me some top shelf wood whiskey, some Woodford Reserve, and they handed me a cigar. I love cigars, if you can't tell from my voice. And um, uh, and then they took these oysters that were like fresh harvested right out of the Chesapeake Bay. Like they knew this guy who like did, who has the best oysters, and so they were like an hour out of the bay or something like that. And, um, and they, they were putting them on this plate, and then they were putting them right into the wood stove, and then they were, you know, cooking them up or whatever, and then we're sitting there at the table in this man cave, shucking these oysters. And I must say, like, 50 of these things, man, they were so good. But the whole experience was incredible, you know? And that's what I'm always looking for, is like kind of that, uh, everybody's so excited to show you their, their well-manicured front yard, you know, like all the, you know, like, look how, look how good we are and then their backyard's a little bit messy. Like when I go into an area, that's what I want to see is, you know, the backyard, that's you know, where all the fun happens. So anyway, uh, Virginia, coastal Virginia especially has become very special to me for that reason. And I wrote this song about that experience. It's a 14 hour drive from this Michigan shoreline Through those mountains to that east coast paradise and These tools will bleed me dry and I've got too much on my mind 
we're going to check in with and go put in a couple hours. So I'm very excited about that. I like to be on the right side of history and on the uh, positive side of a solution. So anyway, we're, uh, we're excited about that. I'll, uh, I'll say, I, Jonathan and I wrote a song together. I'm going to play it here in a little bit. I, uh, uh, I can't say enough good things about Jonathan. He's an incredible, you know, he, he doesn't... Um, you know, he dreams outside the box, you know what I mean? He's not limited by any, any thought. Of, and um, I, I just admire that so much. So anyway, I can't wait to play this song for you, but I'm gonna hold off for just a second. There's a uh, little town up in um, Illinois that uh, a few years ago I was going through a, a divorce and it was, it was kind of ugly. And uh, for the first time in my life, I, I found myself alone and uh, broke and uh, I, I was hopeless, man, and I had some friends over in Lena, Illinois, which is this tiny little town, and noth nothing's there, and uh, nothing significant about it except the people. That's it. The people are just amazing. It's become my favorite place in the world, as a matter of fact. I'll even go over there and vacation. Um, but uh, uh, I had some friends, and they, they said, Gabe, I know you're depressed. Why don't you come on over to Lena? and spend the weekend with us. Our football team is about to win the state championship. And if you've ever been to a, a Midwest small town football game, it's, 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 the, it's everything, it's all they got, you know what I mean? And um, they were about to win the state championship for like six years in a row. So um, I said, yeah, I do that, but I don't have any gas. And they said, don't worry, get here, we'll fill your tank. And I said, my tires are bald. They said, get here, we'll get new tires on your, on your car. Makes me wanna cry just thinking about it. And um, so I grabbed my son and, and uh, we headed out at 10 o'clock at night, which put us, at, uh, put us into Lena at like three in the morning. And if you're coming down Highway 20 in Illinois, um, 
and, uh, and there's nothing, 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 nothing. And then all of a sudden, you see these big bright lights, and they have a big ethanol, you know, uh, plant out by the Highway 20 that just lights up the sky, and it was all surrounded by fog. It was very beautiful, but it was like a big welcome sign, you know. And um, so we turned into Lena, and I thought my friends would be sleeping, but they weren't. They were staying up waiting for us. And um, we drank apple pie moonshine until like five in the morning. We played chess. And then, um, then they showed me a hell of a weekend. We watched them win the state championship. And we, we were actually got to be in the parade. The whole town and all the surrounding towns, they all come together for the biggest celebration. There's nothing quite like a Midwest win, you know? So, and then the rest of the weekend was filled with like doing burnouts with these good old boys, you know, all around town. Uh, you know, like, yeah, you want to go do some burnouts? I'm like, sure, whatever, let's go do it. These guys became some of my best friends in the whole world. So, anyway, uh, when I got back home, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't wait to write this song. This song is very well known up in Lena, Illinois, and um, I'm glad I had an opportunity to write it. It's called the Lena Song. <coughs> Pulled in about 3 a.m. The factory light shining, saying, Come on in. A warm green at the box's house. Apple pie shine, I gave my chest and we're out. I laid down my head and I sleep in peace. No worries here, because life is but a dream in the song. The town of Lena, Illinois. Just by the side, you'd be surprised. This town can make some noise. We're gonna fight, we're gonna win, we're gonna take home the state again in the storm. Down the Lena, Illinois, oh yeah. Lena, Illinois. New people keep showing up, and Natty held this bottomless cup. A few songs, a cool dark beer. Rock car breaks down to cheers to that little town that you've only seen. On those cards for the sea is a dream, it's a song. Town, despite its size, you'd be surprised. This town can make some noise. We're gonna fight, we're gonna win, we're gonna take home the state again. So that's uh, Lena, Illinois, man. I've got several songs written about that town and how much I love it. And it's uh, what uh, what I've noticed about writing a song about a place or, or people is that it, you get welcomed into their community in such a way you can't even imagine. So, um, and that uh, gives me a little shot of dopamine. So I, I'm addicted to it, and that's what I do is I, I, I write songs about the places. There's a, uh, another place up in Monroe, Wisconsin, and um, there's, it's called the Horseshoe Saloon, which is a shady-ass bar where like, a fight is ready to break out at any time. It has a long history of it, and um, 
I've got this uh, this group of guys that follows me, and they're all like in their you know young 20s. They're ready to fight. You know, they want to go out and get laid and get in a fight. You know, that's all they want to do. And uh, we have this like uh, they show up to my shows, and they know on my breaks we're gonna go out and we're gonna smoke big cigars like we're big men. You know what I mean? And, and talk a bunch of shit. I love it so much. But um, these guys are so rowdy, man. They're just some Midwestern country boys. And um, one time we were in there, my buddy Trevor, this young guy, you know, he's like, he wanted to get in a fight. And we're like, no, 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 don't get in a fight. And then we lost him for a second. Holly's over there trying to get in the girls' bathroom. Oh, come on, hurry up, hurry up. And um, like 10 minutes later, out comes Trevor with this beautiful brunette, you know, he comes piling out of the bathroom, the girls' bathroom. But um, anyway, I love this place, uh, even as shady as it is, it's become the unofficial after party location um, when I play shows in the area. So I'm gonna play that song for you right now. It's called The Horseshoe Saloon. For a fight that just the mood he's in tonight Monroe, Wisconsin, after two That fight he seeks, he'll soon forget When that pretty little soft brunette Loving on him in the girl's bathroom We're gonna lose ourselves tonight We're gonna take a shot of life We're gonna get our heads on right And press on through at the horseshoe saloon the horseshoe saloon the horseshoe saloon Logan's over there shooting the pool With some soft and cocky drunk ass fool The boys are watching every single move if the situation turns to worse, that fool will learn and those lessons hurt. For the boys, there's nothing we won't do. We're gonna lose ourselves tonight. We're gonna take a shot of life. We're gonna get our heads on right and press on through. At the horseshoe saloon. At the horseshoe saloon. At the horseshoe the playing some songs about the places that I go to. I, I'm enjoying that, so I don't have a set list or anything. Um, we traveled down to uh, West Virginia. We play Charleston. We play a place called Charleston, which I've absolutely fallen in love with West Virginia as a whole, um, but Charleston especially. 
It's a it's a hurting town, like so many in that area are. You know, I think it was um, I think it was really reliant on uh, you know energy, and you know when the energy got shut off, uh, as far as production goes, it uh, it hurt a lot of people. So it's it's kind of a you know a sad town, but everybody there you know still finds hope in, in the weirdest ways, and it's the most like diverse crowd of people you've ever seen. I I, I love it. But there's this uh, there's this bar there, and it's a historic bar. Uh, people like Tyler Childers and um, uh, Sierra Farrell and, um, and Drive-By Truckers, uh, who else, Joss Stone, all these like, you know, these artists that we know now today, they all came out of this one little club and it's called The, the Empty Glass. And um, it's one of the last remaining like true to form rock clubs, you know, like uh, it, it just feels like, you know, you need a tetanus shot, but uh, going in there but it's but it's amazing and you love it for that reason and then the um there's this alleyway in the and it's like six feet wide by maybe 20 feet long and everybody piles out there to smoke their cheap cigars and their cigarettes and their weed and stuff like that and uh so we're all out in the uh, out in this alleyway and it'd be like you got this big thug dude you got like this businessman and you got like a I don't know, punk girl and some country boys and, you know, just, it's the most eclectic, you know, diverse crowd I've ever been in. And everybody's out there solving all the, each other's problems, bouncing all these ideas off everybody. And I love it. I, I love this place more than I can even put into words. So um, I just wrote a song about it and um, we just played there a couple weeks ago and it did not disappoint, did it, Patty? <laughs> all right, this song's called The Empty Glass.
to cut out. Sorry about that. Yeah, anyway, empty glass. One time we were sitting in there. I think it was the first time we went in there, and uh, I'm like, a, I got a huge crush on Sierra Farrell. Are you guys familiar with Sierra Farrell? Sierra Farrell, anybody? No, okay, she's like a, uh, a folk singer. I mean, she's huge, like in the right circles, she's like, she's huge. She's been out on the road with Tyler Childers and um, Dirk Bentley, all, you know, like all these big guys. Anyway, I, I, I have biggest crush on her, don't tell Holly. Um, but anyway, we were in there, we walked into the club and I was talking to the bartender and I, I got booked to play there and I was like, yeah, I was like, who else plays here? And she's like, oh, this guy, this guy, this guy, and Sierra Farrell. And I was like, shut up, are you kidding me? Sierra's played this club? She, he, she, and the bartender's like, oh yeah, she, she comes in here all the time. And um, I couldn't believe it, man. I was just blown away. So I'm, I'm, I'm like fangirling out. I got my phone out. I'm showing her videos of like Sierra Farrell and stuff. And so me and the bartender are just like swapping Sierra stories back and forth. And um, all of a sudden the bartender taps the bar and she points towards the door and I look over and Sierra walked in. She's got this big like Russian fur cap on. She's carrying this little, little dog. Anyway, she sits down right at the bar stool next to me and I was just like, you know, fangirling out. And um, Holly's sitting right here, Sierra's sitting right there, you know. And uh, I was like, Hi, you know, I just started talking to her, you know, I, mean? I, was, I was such an asshole. Anyway, whatever. We ended up hanging out with her like all night long, man. We, we went out in the alleyway and she's a big conspiracy theorist, I'm a big conspiracy theorist. Uh, so we stopped swapping conspiracy theory stories. It was awesome, it was like one of my, one of my favorite nights. So anyway, good times. That's where that, like, uh, that part of the song was like, I hear Sierra's waiting for me, at least a boy can pretend, yeah. And, and when I play that in the club, that Holly always flips me off. Anyway, I'm from Michigan. My, uh, my home state is Michigan. And, um, I'm not there very often, but I, I, I still call it home. I'm out on the road like now like 200, 250 dates a year, maybe more. I can't, I lost count, but um, uh, my kids live there, I love it. And then and there's like two weeks out of the year where the weather's tolerable enough to go outside. That's so weird, man. Um, we call it summer, so I wrote a song um, called Summertime in Michigan. I'm gonna play it for you now. It's a small town in the Rust Belt with the girls all watch the boys melt in the sun. We got a packed car, she's on my lap, and she winked back. Did you see that? I'm in love. Summer love, get you some, leave your troubles where the trouble just have fun. Summertime, three for three, cold beer, but it's cheap. No matter, it'll work with me. Songs for kid rock, for fishing, for lake docks, find vibes with my friends. Where the road ends, that's where the life can begin. It's summertime in Michigan. Summertime in Michigan, yeah, yeah. It's a hot one, grab a cold one. We got the grill going, go and get some for free. We got a group float, we got no boat. We got tubes though, so we can all go free. Summer love, get you some, leave your troubles where the summer just have fun. You and me and the breeze. Summertime, three for three, cold. with my friends where the road ends that's where life can begin it's summertime in michigan summertime in michigan yeah, yeah. summertime in michigan yeah. summer 
Find out getting some Need the trouble Where the problem Just have fun But it's cheap, no matter it'll work for me. Songs that keep rock, with fishing for flick docks, and bonfires with my friends. Where the road ends, that's where life can begin. It's summertime in Michigan. Summertime in Michigan. Summertime in Michigan, yeah, yeah. Summertime in Michigan. Yeah. So in love, getting some, leaving trouble, where the fun and just have fun, yeah. Summertime in Michigan. I think it might be this amp right here that's shorting out. You think it might be my battery? It's doing the same thing for him though. It might be my batteries and my guitar. Just bypass the amp. Do my best to get the same levels. Does that sound okay? All right, yeah, we'll, we'll see how that works. I think I think that amp might be going. All right, man. Um, I'll play a song that's not about a place that we go to. Um, it's just one of the songs that means a lot to me. Um, I used to write songs professionally in Nashville for like 15 years. I still write songs professionally, but not in Nashville. It sounds way more impressive when you say Nashville for some reason. So I say Nashville, but uh, 15 years in Nashville, as a contract writer, I wrote commercial music, you know, real soulless shit, like stuff you're just not proud of at all. You know, you sit in a room with these guys for like, you know, a week just pumping out the, the worst things you can imagine and, and watching these morons get excited about it. The Nashville writing scene is terrible, freaking terrible. Um, so for 15 years I struggled through that, but it opened up a lot of doors for me and introduced me to a lot of people. But um, when I left Nashville, I, I just started writing whatever the hell I wanted to write, you know, not what I thought people wanted to hear or anything like that. Uh, I just I just wrote you know what was meaningful to me. This is one of the more meaningful songs that I've ever written, and um, it's called Cold Dark Beer. I won't tell you what it's about. Uh, maybe you can find yourself in it, but uh, it means a lot to me. Seat, there's a stranger in silence sipping dark beer and there's a quiet pain inside his old blue eyes they ask if he's from this town he just shakes his head and looks down no but i knew a girl one time it seems he fell in love once with a girl who loved for six months before running off to chase her dreams and doubts and he's been sitting here waiting hoping praying for the day when she walks through the door that she walked out And on that thought he sighs He says, I don't trust what she's after A little heart thump, a little laughter A little line them up and throw them back Cheers to life Those late nights and those good times Are gonna get what she's gonna think twice And she'll come running home to be my wife And I'll be waiting right here Cold dark beer 
I'll be waiting right here behind this cold dark beer. I'll be waiting right here behind this cold dark beer. I look up at the bar me and realize there's no one else here. And that stranger around the bar still looks like me. Looking so much older, unkempt with fallen shoulders, and those eyes are dark like they ain't slept in weeks. But someone told me to move on, except the fact that you're gone. But I've got faith that you'll be back someday. If I can hold on a little longer, if I can just be a little stronger, then I'll get that chance to see your face. And on that thought, I sigh. Yeah, I'm just a giraffe to a little heart pump, a little laughter, a little light on my thrown back, cheers for life. Those late nights and those good times, are gonna get old, you're gonna think twice, and you'll come running home to be my wife. And I'll be waiting right here behind this cold, dark beer. I'll be waiting right here behind this cold, dark beer. I'll be waiting right here behind this cold, dark beer. Thank you, thank you very much. So, um, uh, I don't know, maybe a week ago, I guess right, right when the hurricane hit, man, uh, uh, Jonathan got a hold of me, you know, he, he lives in this area, obviously, you know, he raised, raises his family here, and, uh, excuse me, I didn't realize I had that behind my ear, my apologies, um, and, uh, uh, you know, he, 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 he saw the, the damage of the hurricane firsthand and, and, and probably knew people that were more affected by it than he was. And um, um, anyway, I could tell he was pretty emotional about it, you know, as a lot of people were. I, I'm, I'm not from this area, so, you know, all I could do is watch it on the news and stuff and, and, and hear the stories and on X and everything. And it was, it was you know, devastating. I'm an empath. I, I, uh, you know, I definitely felt it, but I didn't have it. I didn't have any firsthand, um, you know, relationship to it. But Jonathan did, and and um, anyway, he he wrote he wrote some words. He's not a songwriter that I know of, anyway. He's never written a hit song or anything like that. But he wrote this. He wrote the words to this song, and I read them, and I was like, man, that's this is incredible. Like it's an incredible song. And um, as I said earlier, you know, I love, I love taking other people's words and putting them to music and stuff. So when John, Jonathan sent it over to me and said, hey, do you think you could put some, uh, some music to this? Um, I was honored. I was absolutely honored, you know. Uh, and especially as well written as they were and as honest as they were, you know, I think there's a movement in songwriting that's going back to honesty and sincerity. For the last 20, 30 years, we've been lied to with our music, with our, you know, the presentation. The people behind the strings are, are not good people, you know. So, and, 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 and the normal people are figuring that out, you know. So when they hear, you know, a real honest song, um, it means a lot more to them. And they're realizing that and there's a movement towards it. So, uh, on top of, you know, paying tribute to the people of Appalachia and everything that they're going through and have gone through. Um, Jonathan wrote a song that was honest and true and contributing to the great story, which is, is so important, you know? So anyway, I'm gonna play this song written by, uh, by Jonathan here. I'm gonna do my best to do it justice anyway. called Heaven Help Us. We knew he was coming, but we had no fear. The 
mountains they protect us year after year Aline she was different too much water to bear and it happens in an instant a life with despair heaven help us Send your angels to defend Cause the spirit of our mountain folks Comes pouring in Heaven help us Lord, wrap your arms around them As they enter soaking wet You're not one of them Deserve that kind of death Heaven help us Aline was a monster And she took so many lives And the people will come together As they always do As they are true The Lord Heaven help us Cause we need you Yeah we need you Heaven help us Send your angels To the fan As the spirit of our mountain folks Comes pouring in Heaven help us Lord wrap your arms around them As they enter soaking wet You're not one of them So that kind of death Yeah, a uh, beautiful song, man. It chokes me up every time. So, well done, Jonathan. Jonathan just got an amazing heart, man. An amazing family. I, I'm, I've, I've, I've met a few of them now, and um, his wife is absolute, an absolute angel. I'm sure puts up with more than we know, but uh, she does it with a smile on her face, even though she's healing up from a some oral surgery. She's still over there grinning. I can see it. He, uh, there's this, uh, there's a token. I don't know how many people are in here into cryptocurrencies or anything like that. I wasn't into cryptocurrencies, um, but I came across this one. It was called Prime, right? And uh, it had, the, and, and the cool thing about cryptocurrencies is there's like, there's these communities that get built up around them. You know, these these groups of people that just kind of rally together and um, and they get behind them. And 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 the Prime family. As I as I called it was it was incredible. It was so tight, and everybody had its back, you know each other's backs. And I wrote a song, you know, because I, I I witnessed this community. And I wrote a song. I don't even remember how it goes. Do you remember? I can't remember. Anyway, 
And um, I was so enamored with this community, as I am with like Holly's family. And, um, and then, you know, there was one, you know, it always takes one bad apple, and there was one shady character, maybe a couple of them actually, but um, they did some bad things, and it affected the whole community. And it was so sad to, to watch, you know, because the, um, all these promises that had been made, they, they, you know, they couldn't be fulfilled, and the thing tanked, and everybody lost a bunch of money, right? Myself included. And, um, and but the saddest part was the community had kind of like dissolved all over this one bad dude, right? So Jonathan steps up and, and he takes control of the token. And um, I mean, we're talking about in shambles, you know what I mean? Like everything, it doesn't look like you could restore this or revive this in any way, shape, or form. And um, he gets a hold of me and he says, Gabe, Mark my words, I'm gonna make everything right and every promise that was made to you is gonna be fulfilled. You have my word. And he went around to the whole community and told them each and everybody that. He said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring this back to life. You, you, you watch, I'm gonna do everything and fulfill every promise. And, um, and everybody was like, yeah, right, we've seen this before, you know what I mean? There's been a hundred cryptocurrencies where you know they call it rugging, where you pull the rug out from underneath it. And, every, and the whole community falls, and it's, it's sad. And, and that's kind of what happened to Freem. But Jonathan took control of it, and, and he said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this right. And we went to this big convention up in Toronto, and, um, and Jonathan stood there proud, shoulders back, chest out. He's like, you know, I'm, I'm not ashamed you know, to be here. I'm not hiding from anybody. I'm gonna make this right, you know? And uh, he didn't have full control over it when it fell, but he took control over it. And slowly but surely, man, like every day he's on, on, on all these social media platforms and he's making all these big moves and um, he starts fulfilling one promise after another and you start seeing the whole community come back together and uh, all these old faces. I, you know, I'm, I get a big pussy, I guess. I'm just like getting up here choked up because all these people that I love were starting to come back to it, you know? And anybody who held onto the token you know, we're, we're, I'm very proud to say, and I'm sure Jonathan is too, that it's back up to where it was, you know, when, when, um, when that knucklehead crashed it. So anyway, um, I'm so impressed with him and what he's done with it. If you're gonna, if you're gonna jump on board with a cryptocurrency, I, 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 you know, not financial advice at all, but I would feel so, so comfortable telling you that what Jonathan has built um, Preem token is just the beginning. It's going to go, you know, everywhere that he, he says it's going to go. I have no doubt about that. So, anyway, take a look at Preem token if you're not into cryptocurrencies and jump on board for this ride. But um, you're not just getting a token, man. You're getting Jonathan Manus, and that's that's a lot. So, cheers to you. I'm going to play one more song and, um, and call it a night. Thank you guys for coming out very much. Thank you for having me. Um, and uh, I look forward to, um, you know, coming back to this area more frequently and getting to know you guys and, and uh, maybe writing a song about Jonesboro. That would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? Cat stubborn survivor, raise on, help yourself and go away. I've strutted streets of war, stealing candy from the stores. At three years old, and change had made the days. And my sister led the way. At five years old, she held the reins. The odds were stacked against us, but we did okay. Cause I was born in flame, fueled by loss and pain. Flickering in the wind, nearly blowing out my light. And then I grew into a fire, my flames walked through iron, and I burned down anything or anyone standing in. I was born a flame 
Right. 